in that situation, I had KD right here, and I had somebody on the other side or whatever, and the ball or the ball came down. So I, I'm, as the ball bounced, I didn't think I had a chance to get the ball, honestly. Right. So when I got the ball, I'm like, oh shit. But mind you, KD's still standing right here. I'm like, I'm not about to just go right up on this my tall ass motherfucker. Right. So I go, I dribble it out. Right. But normally in every other situation like that, for us, what do they do? If you didn't call the timeout on your own, was it because you didn't know whether y'all had timeouts or not? I wasn't even thinking about that. You I was, just was like, you just really was like, damn, I got it. Right. <laughs> like I'm like, shit, I, I got the ball. I'm about to take it out. Mm-hmm. What the fuck? On today's show, we got Jr. Smith, 16-year NBA vet, two championships, six man of the year. What's going on, bro? <laughs> what's happening? What's happening? What up? What up? It's good. We didn't even notice that we ain't seen each other in that long. Facts. It's. Cr- I was telling you, man. It's crazy when you go from seeing each other every day, yeah. and then you go to Spain, so you just don't. We're not working together no more. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm letting y'all know now, man. Y'all want to keep your friends, keep your family around, get money together. Because yeah, <laughs> the moment you forget to do that, it don't even be no hard feelings. At it's all. like, where you been? Get money. <laughs> right. Over here getting bread. You been over there getting bread. Yes, sir. We got, you know, we got kids you. in between all of that. So, yeah. you know, just stand to it. You wouldn't have been able to tell me when we got traded over there that I would go a month without seeing dude. Like at yeah. some point through working out, through doing whatever, it's like once we stop seeing each other cause we are on the same team, like it was like you start working. And like he said, the kids thing he was saying was like, the more kids happen, the less we even go out to function. Mm-hmm. Unless All we right. got paid to be at the same place at the same, same time. time. We not going unless the kids wanted to see that same movie at the same time. Facts. We won't be there. So for everybody out there that got uh <laughs> that 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 guy in the crew that he he don't love you no less. He just got a little girl now. <laughs> right, right. He just got a little thing called responsibility. That's it. When we was in New York, it was cool like it's one of the reasons I was like back, like they'll tell you, I was like on them to come out to New York more. Cause I'm like, dog, he got his brothers out here. Like they just don't be one. <laughs> My brothers just don't be wanting to do that sometimes. They be liking to have Chicago just stay there for some reason, I don't know. But uh, having, you always having them around, having Chris around, uh, especially cause he was playing ball, making sure you could push open the door. If you could hold open the door for him, you know what I'm saying? Um, how important is the word brotherhood to you? Um, I mean, t- for me, it was everything because I've, from the, you know, the moment I stepped foot on this earth, I was already a brother. Yeah. Um, I, I came into uh, older having an older brother and uh, uh, two older sisters. Uh, then after me, Chris and yeah. uh, younger brother Demetrius. Um, you know, ever since my my older brother kind of got in trouble in school and stuff like that and uh, started running the streets. And, you know, my pops trying to make it, make it more of an emphasis. And even for myself, I was like, I'm not going to be like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I got two younger ones after me and they, they you know, they look up to me. They, I, Chris is, you know, one of the reasons why I had the success I've had because of the way he pushed me. Yeah. And um and the way I try to push him as well, but um to have that to have a, a brotherhood that I have with my brothers and uh, my sisters, you know, uh, you know, it, it it makes me appreciate everything that I've received. Yeah, going to the garden, being able to play in the league. This is like one of the reasons why I wanted to do it because I've always envisioned us doing it together. Right. You know what I'm saying? My family coming to the garden and all. I never really envisioned playing for the Knicks. But, <laughs> you know, that was my pop's favorite team. So that was the main reason why I went there. A That's lot fun. of my decisions that I made throughout my career has been based on that. Yeah. And, um, you know, even, you know, getting my brother to sign. And now, now it was cool. But, but when I was doing this, it wasn't cool to get your brother, <laughs> put your brother on. Real talk. But, 
um, yeah, I mean, that's what it's, that's what it's about. That's fun. Yeah, because for, like for me, when growing up, hooping in the league was always like the goal, whether it's basketball, football, baseball, whatever. Yeah. And I, you know, me and my brother always envisioned playing in the league together, playing on the same team, right. going on this team, he on that, I'm on that team. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Rocking different jerseys in the backyard, really being MJ, Grant Hill, uh -huh. or whoever else jersey you had, <laughs> Benny, you know what I mean? That's like that's where that dream started. So when you got an opportunity to actually make that shit happen or make it possible for your brother or however, you know, his vision is, whether it be in something totally different, mm -hmm. um, you always want to invest that and, you know, do it together because at the end of the day, y'all came in together. Y'all right. been together forever, so you ain't going. <laughs> You know it's funny, bro. That conversation we was having earlier. That's how I felt about Grand Hill. What? So, so okay, yeah. This is all right. We we okay. we right into it, guys. Okay. This is how it's got to start. I get asked this question just because I've been playing with him for so long, and people always ask me like, "Why did he do that?" Like when in the finals, mm -hmm. why did he do that? And my my first take was, I'm like, bro, honestly, when I looked at it, that's the first time Jr. thought. I'm like, if I if I know JR, normal JR catches that ball and just scores it. Cause honestly, I don't I don't think he would have thought about it. Like I think he would have caught it, saw the rim, saw daylight, and just put a bucket in y'all and it's over. Like, but I felt like you was trying to do the right thing and you was like, oh shit, I don't want to pull the timeout move. We ain't got none. Like it was just a lot to process and you was like, fuck. It's a hell of a lot to That's process. what I thought, but I, I didn't. I didn't want to. I never knew. I, I always wanted to ask him. I just never knew. You know what I'm so, saying? You know it's crazy because the whole situation was like, I don't know. If, I don't know if you paid attention to it, but like going throughout the the free throw situation, whatever. We making one, miss one, making one, miss one, whatever the yeah. situation is. And in that situation, I had KD right here, and I had somebody on the other side. Or whatever, and the ball or the ball came down. So I, I'm as the ball bounced. I didn't think I had a chance to get the ball. Honestly, right. so when I got the ball, I'm like, oh shit! <laughs> but mind you, KD still standing right mm -hmm. here. So I'm like, I'm not about to just go right up on this my tall ass motherfucker. Right. So I go, I dribble it out. Right. But normally, in every other situation like that, for us, what do they do after uh, we get the rebound? They gonna call the timeout. <laughs> Somebody's gonna call a timeout. We. We got an extra possession. We, right. Nobody's gonna call a timeout. All right. So I'm supposed to think to get the rebound and call a timeout. So I, I don't got nobody else out here. It's just me. I'm playing golf now. That's how you felt. I mean, it's cool. I mean, I understand it's everybody on the team's right. responsibility to figure yeah. you know, whatever. But you felt like but somebody should have stepped in. Not, step, like, not really stepped in, but it's just like there's, it, it seemed like they all had it on him. Like all the awareness had to be on him. So it's like, Somebody no should have other... stepped up, but at the same time, it's like it was all on him to figure it out. But that's what I'm saying. When you when you didn't, if you didn't call the timeout on your own, was it because you didn't know whether y'all had timeouts or not? I wasn't even thinking about that. You I was, just was like, you just really was like, damn, I got it. Right. <laughs> like I'm like, shit, I I just the, I'm about to take it out. Mm -hmm. What the fuck? He shit. thinking they finna run something real quick. I'm just yeah. In my mind, I told people when they asked me, I was like, bro, I think that man just thought about it. I honestly think, I was. I honestly feel like if he wasn't thinking and y'all had never hit hit my man with all this bullshit ass shot selection and all this weirdo shit that now he's out here trying to actually, you know, better himself and say, yo, let me take a second to not overreact or do something erratic. I'm like, bro, that's the time. Like, I feel like he would have stepped there and realized like, bro, y'all ain't gonna follow me to this three point line <laughs> and I'm down one. Like that's how I felt. I felt like you was gonna turn and just pull it. Like I mean, if I if I turned and nobody was there, I was damn sure gonna shoot. That's what I'm saying. Fucking. Like it was that moment. You saw the when you resaw the clip though. You saw the moment of hesitation. Yeah, 100%. but you had already passed the three point line to look at the other. It looked like you was looking at the other clock or or Bron, one of the two. But you had already passed and your eyes went up. But I was like, if he would have turned around, he would have realized they hesitated. He'd have got that off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like I probably could have got it off, but the first, when I dribbled it out and I first looked up the court, the first person I seen was Bron. Right. So I'm looking to get the ball to him. I'm looking to look at the shot clock, see how much time we got left. 
Exactly. Right, cool. Got process and everything. Uh, yeah, yeah. I know that moment, but that's what yeah. I said. It was like, it was his first time, I think, trying to be, but I know that feeling of like, because I honestly, I didn't know how to do it. You remember T. Lou used to get mad at me all the time for that. He called it, he had to blow a timeout one time. It was a regular season game, but he pulled me aside and said, I gotta know I could trust you. It was a big stop, but you was gonna go without, without everybody. Like, <laughs> but I'm like, gee, I'm in a, like, he right, knew, right, like, right. you just in that murder mode where it's like, bro, I gotta calm you down. Like, it's a big possession. Great that you got it, but you had no daylight and nobody could stop you. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like, you understand the moments where it's like your coach, and you run into these problems, but I always wanted to ask you about that. I never got to ask, and I never let you, like, I feel like people, so many people talked about the situation, and you ain't get to talk your shit, as right. to just be like, bro, it wasn't that big a deal. It was X, Y, and Z. It just was under a big microscope. I mean, yeah, I mean, a lot of it's just because it's me. Yeah, um, that's what yeah. I was gonna say. And I, and I don't mean big a deal, like not a big deal as far as the game. I meant like a big deal as far as like, it wasn't something wrong with you. There okay. wasn't like some, Miss, like, you know what I'm saying? Some wild, weird shit that went on. It's just a simple explanation. Like, bro, right. somebody should just call the timeout. Yeah, like all the, the memes and shit. Oh, he was high. He was drunk, Yeah, it's like, like all the extra shit is crazy. Like. First of all, buddy, <laughs> let me tell you First something. of all, buddy. Let me tell you something. <laughs> people don't understand about marijuana, which they don't, what they want to continuously yeah. Label me for it, which is fine. It's I like cool. weed. Weed is cool. fine. Yeah, it's cool. It's nothing it's really wrong cool. with cannabis. Really, really cool. Um, cool. But say if you were to smoke before a game, right? We get uh, we get on the bus two hours before the game, right? Mm -hmm. Get to the get to the uh, arena. Got an hour and a half before the game. Mm -hmm. Chilling, working out, getting your shots up, mm -hmm. all of that. So if worse kind of worse, if somebody did smoke before the game. He's not going to be high three hours later. No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe four hours later. All right. He would never out, find the time to go. Like, bro, you'll be already in. irked and sleep. You'll be like, 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 you'll boy, be like did you, <laughs> you realize what I'll be like? Because that ain't the you want to go hoop on for. Like, <laughs> stop. No. Yeah. Then it's not like it's not like it's alcohol. You out there playing drunk. Right. You sloppy. Right. Like, yeah. I think now though they're starting to learn more about it. Is uh, there's still people combating it, but I think they're starting to learn like it's more of like if we're it's if cigarettes, secret. yeah, if cigarettes are okay, it's just like cigarettes can ruin your life. You, yeah, you know. <laughs> that'll ruin your life forever. The older generations complain about how soft the new generation is. Oh, they get this, they get that, this, that, and then whatever, whatever. These motherfuckers was over there drinking beers and smoking cigarettes and black and miles and cigars at halftime. But yet somebody can go out a night before the game and now all of a sudden this person is the worst person right. in the world. But bro, you let alone a night before the game, you're smoking and drinking during the game. I think that that's what- uh, We soft though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just so everybody know who they, who they dealing with, this is J.R. Smith. The same guy I watch win six man of the year and drink a Pepsi at halftime. You want any thoughts or uh, uh, you want to say anything about that? You want to tell these people about it? I would love to be the first one to tell y'all. I watched this man <laughs> drink a Pepsi and get 30 on Boston in the taxi cab 12. Why is that so amazing? Huh? Drinking a Pepsi? What you think he was gonna throw up? So he couldn't handle some catch, a, get a headache, catch a cramp. But that's another why, and then it's like uh, we trust him though. Dry like if lips. Anybody gonna, give me dry lips. But if anybody, <laughs> if anybody go do it, like bro, some gotta. I was looking. I right. I remember sitting up. We had these uh, uh, the little chairs and shit that swing and shit. So you got. Mm -hmm. I could really, you know what I'm saying. So I fell back in my shit like. Like, bro, a, a pop? And I'm drinking all this water. I'm salt tablets, Gatorade, all this stuff so that I could be in mode, bro. Nah, Shorty I got. Bro, I grew up off soda and nuggets, man. That's what you hear. For real. <laughs> what do you eat pregame? Some bullshit. Chicken fingers, <laughs> soda, candy. 
dog, eat out the concession oh, stand yeah. and okay. give you 30. It makes sense. It don't. No, it does. It <laughs> does. <laughs> you no, talking about? It do, though, because when hey, you're a I'll kid, be out no, here eating kid, all grilled and baked foods and shit. I done seen you eat a salads. burger, though, and get buckets. Oh, no, I did yeah, high school. Once I started oh, cramping nigga, up. on Easter in the NBA. When? We ate, remember, we, we got pretty drunk the night before, and we ate pizza. Oh, like pizza's greasy, fine. But greasy ass New York pizza. No, that's fine. It's Big the, slices, too. I'm Always. talking about while competing, bro. But you were about to compete. Like, this is if like that's an the hour day before, before the game. I did not have an hour before the game. That no morning, you can... ate it in the car. But that's what I'm saying. In the car, there's no way it could be an hour before the game. I got to be there two hours. I mean, the game. yeah, there you go. That's what I'm saying. I, by the time I got but to how the you arena, burn I off probably. Because big, big we work of out. Pizza. I work out yeah, twice once I get to there. You're going to burn that off. That's fine. But I'm saying during the game is why it's crazy. Halftime, you've deplenished yourself of all good things in the first half. All the good that you did for your body in the first half is now leaving your body. <laughs> and now it's time to give your body good stuff so you can go fight the good fight. JR so popped a Pepsi open and gave y'all an extra 16 in the second half. Well, that's what want. <laughs> it made every free throw down the stretch. I was blue. Pepsi. <laughs> Pepsi. I was blue. And y'all ain't give him no commercials. See, that's that bullshit. How you ain't get his Pepsi commercial? We didn't know until you just told us. Come on, man. Pepsi, what y'all want to do, bro? I'm brokering the deal, dog. <laughs> that is the most coldest story ever, bro. The man oh, popped so open a Pepsi. <laughs> it's got crazy, it. bro. I tried I tried so many times to have like a meal prep and regiment and all that shit. I remember. That shit go I remember for like when they had David week, with you. Four days. Shout yeah. out to David. Yeah. Shout out my dog, yeah, David Joe. <laughs> Straight up. Not that Damon Jones, because they always think we yeah. talk about the other no, Damon no, Jones. Different. And shout out to that Damon Jones, too, though, because he funny the motherfucker, too. <laughs> but Damon Jones, man, MBPA. Is, do, is he, he MBPA now? Yeah, I think he with the league now. He is. So he Damon, uh, boy, you a, a, a man working. of many hats, ain't yeah, you? Yeah, that <laughs> works. Shout out to Damon. Yeah, but yeah. we're going to stay back on track. Going back to the uh, the brotherhood stuff. What's the toughest thing you two went through in your time uh, with the Cavs? You remember on the ride back when Bron- That's all I talk about. Bro, did we on the ride back, it was either the plane or the bus back, and they kept talking about getting game, getting game five. Bro, when we got game five and we came back and they was like talking, they was like, like they, this is what's gonna happen. We finna go here, we finna win. We finna do this back here cause they not gonna wanna come back here and then it's anybody's game. And I'm like, bro, how we down 3-1 previewing? <laughs> how the fuck this shit gonna go? But I could see in everybody's eyes, I'm like, it, it just looked like it took everybody to be like, yep, y'all down 3-1, statistics say y'all lost, so y'all lose. It's like, it took that for us all to look at each other like, yeah, fuck all that. Like. Yeah, we not <laughs> we not that losing. Was crazy, bro, because that that ride to the uh, you remember that the ride from the bus on the bus because it was I, it was it was going over the bridge, right? That's why we was going back to Cleveland. We was finna go. We, was, we so we had just played that game and we was going back on the plane. Right. It was quiet as a motherfucker. Yes. How did it start? How did that conversation start? It was crickets, <laughs> boy, bro. And for us. Our bus, like, I, I've been on a lot of buses, but our bus is always junk. Mm -hmm. Like, somebody talking, somebody yeah. chit-chatting, like, cause that's how we was, right. that's the type of group we were. And when I tell you, like, even wins, losses, whatever, that, we lost that game, and then Sorry. we, oh my God, that shit was eerie. It was, real, it was literally eerie on the bus. Like, ain't nobody wanna call nobody. Nobody had their headphones on listening to music. Like, it was just Dang. frustration. But it was like right after that, when we came, even like the game plan after that was just like, everybody's done with y'all. Oh, we just gotta it's get one. It's up to y'all. We just gotta get one. It's up to y'all, yeah. Basically, like everybody was just looking at like, we all we got type shit. And everybody became like completely unselfish. <laughs> it was weird as hell. It was like, 
There was no immediately. It was no selfish talk. Like you could say, like what? You, you could say, say anything. anything to anybody. And <laughs> Real talk, niggas was like, niggas wanted you war. Good, like, like no we, bullshit. I got you. Like, what? and I'm talking about. I'm talking like you'll be tired. You're like, man, no, fuck him. Like that's how it would be. Like you know how you taking it out and somebody like trying to steal the inbound pass. Like instead, it like, hey, fuck him, throw it. I get it. Like. Everybody was just super was sure of themselves. Yeah, like, yeah, it was my, like, I got your back. Like, if you, if somebody missed out, the second help was there, bro. The second <laughs> help was there. I'm not gonna lie. Hey, it was, if it, if it ain't never, there. but it took, it took that dark, we had a dark ass ride when we first lost uh -huh. to go there. But after we got that win, the bus talk was like, like, I remember Bron, like, he was like halfway standing up, bro. But he was telling me like, he like, I'm telling you, we'll do this, we'll do that. Then we found out Draymond wasn't playing the one game. We mm -hmm. end up getting, he was like, when we get back here, they not gonna know what happened. Like, by the time we got back and saw how they was walking down the hall, we like, oh, y'all shook. Wait, what they do when they was They was just, on? you could you, see it. You like see, it was, they was defeated. Yeah, they was just yeah. like, like, they was game looking seven, like. seven, like, they, you know, we knew they was gonna get, we was gonna get a, a fight. Well, we knew they was defeated. Like you, they, they was like they, you, they, they knew spirit. like they we, there's no way. Yeah, it's no way. We just we just let them all the way back. So that whole back thing in. was like mental. Oh, it that got real mental. Was, yeah. It got physical too, though. Like I don't know why the refs let. If you go back and look, I, like we we could talk as much shit as we want. Like Steph and Clay ain't no bitch. Oh, yeah. Nah, nah, they ain't no. Bitch. That's the funny thing because everybody be like, man, look at little light skin boys. They I was the soft well, glasses like that. Nah, motherfuckers put, ain't soft. Yeah, I not. was pulling I my they elbows. Ain't soft. They, they, tell you, they run hard. They play hard. They work hard. The motherfuckers go. They stop flopping okay, and they start you, smacking nah, our hand off. Like, straight up. I was Clay. like, oh, you really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Clay, Clay took oh, his hand. Bro, when that that shit, light skin I see the motherfuckers going. I'm like, man, whatever. I light skin as a rich. Us, yeah. yeah. Oh, you wanted yeah. it? Oh, yeah. Right, right. You wanted it? Yeah. Oh. No. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I had respect. Though, it was, it was like that war that we had with them. Like, it was good because we all year we was like, you know, we were talking shit. Like, eh, okay, that's in the West, bro. Do that to us, and then. But I knew when we when we was playing them, bro. Like when when Clay took his hand, like he took his hand and really like did like that, like really. Jawed me though, like for real, for real. When you think about it, but I remember thinking, like, I, like I was saying earlier, I love that we get forty eight minutes to hate each other, like that. That so ooh, you like the aggression? I love you it. Liked all of that. I love it. Forth, that, okay. That's why I love Clay Thompson yeah. to this day, bro. Because that man was ready to swing off me. I love him. I love that guy. <laughs> Steph too, man. Steph was talking shit, man. Call me a bitch and everything, bro. That's cool, bro. I'm glad you got that in you. <laughs> I'm serious, man, because you could have just let me do it. Right. You could have just let me just be like, yeah, that's how it's going to go. You could have just been nice about it. You think that's because of us? I don't you, know. You, I just you, thought, you, I just think I thought he was, I thought it was sweet and it wasn't like sweet and I was of, proud. Uh, extra motivation you throwing on that. What? No, I mean, I ain't gonna make him be yeah. extra. Shit, John Moran don't need no extra motivation to do oh. shit. Fuck, <laughs> shit. See how he cocking it. Hey, listen here. <laughs> hey, that's why you got, for all kids out there, man, you gotta think long and hard about them charges these days, man. I know it's the right play, and I understand. Who said it was the right play? Oh, no, now listen. A charge will save your life <laughs> when you exhaust it. You gotta outsmart them. Honestly, I don't. Cause there's some people that jump off them <laughs> yeah, trampolines. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. There's some oh people who jump over. Oh my god! Yeah. I did not know he had that much control over a basketball. If he was, bro, I didn't know his hands was that big. I don't think they are. I think he cuffed that basketball, bro. Really? That I, that did not look like he palmed it. Yeah, he's definitely one of my favorite young free. boys to watch. Oh, he a free. my lord! I think he, he is got, my favorite. The thing about him, though. The, what I really like, especially being young, he knows the game. Yeah, he can hoop. Like he know how to get his teammates open. He know the end, how to change. He the got a heart. He got a heartbeat. Of the, yeah, a like, heartbeat for the he game. He got a real feel for the game. Yes. He ain't yes. just out there just trying to get thirty. Like he so, gonna get his buckets, but, but he, he know when to get somebody off because they having a down game and he need them. Right. He know to sure. go in there and get the big man in foul trouble because the big man killing eyes. That's why I don't think he should have won most improved because he been nice. 
No, give it to him. He was nice last year, though. <laughs> he was. He was nice last year. But this, but year, this was a nicer. big improvement. Yeah, That's what's scary. Way nice. Whether we like to see it or not, so. bro, this was a huge. Are you watching him? Yes, he was. I was watching the same thing he was doing last year. <laughs> He's in. nice. All right, man. So we're going to get back to the theme. Uh, we were talking about the uh, brotherhood and, you know, you guys' toughest moments. Uh, going back to that, what about, like, you know, stepping away from basketball? Like, how do you think that's, you know, made you two really, like, grow as men? You start off, JR. I feel like I grow every time I'm with my kids. It's just. The love is always there. The, you can always learn something as a parent. You just have to be open-minded to understand that you don't know everything. <laughs> and for a lot of us, once we've done it, anything once, a lot of us think we're experts at it because mm -hmm. we did it one time or you do it twice. You know what I'm saying? And when you're dealing with kids, you have to be able to continuously learn and adapt because they're coming from different generations, different minds, different thoughts, different, just totally different people. So for me, it's, it's really changed my perspective, uh, understanding life is much bigger than basketball. Life is much bigger than just the NBA and what I got going on. You know, I, going back to school and being, trying to educate myself and better myself as a, person and not just continuously trying to throw that effort into my job. I think that's the, probably the biggest investment I've made since. And um, I've grown so much from that. Just being a better man, mm -hmm. uh, I feel is um, something I can't really uh, put a price on because I, I wasn't in a situation to grow as, I had to grow faster than others and I lost um, well, I didn't lose, but I never picked up a lot of the traits that go along with, you know, growing up and be maturing the right way. I've been fortunate to pick up a lot of other skills and get and gather a lot more uh, different types of knowledge than mm -hmm. other a lot of, uh, you know, the standard or whatever you want to call it, the, the other hundred people. Yeah. But it's also traits that they picked up that I didn't pick up at yeah. along. So learning and Gathering those now at 36, I get a better perspective of what I've missed out on, so to speak. But I get to gain it in my own time and the way I want to and, you know, receive and digest it. So it's, it's, it's a lot easier for me because now being away from, you know, different toxic environments, whether it be, mm -hmm. you know, your locker room, front office, and all of that, media, public, I, so to speak, mm -hmm. it gives it gives me a lot better, uh, or not a lot better, but allows me to, what I feel like, make the important mistakes opposed mm -hmm. to something that happened on Twitter. <laughs> right, <laughs> so, right. Or Some sometimes somebody shit, shit which you right. actually you know learn from. Yeah. Right, so I get to actually learn and build off of those mistakes in private without having to be in the public eye. So I really, I feel like I've grown way more in that aspect. It's fine, bro. That is fine, man. Real tough. Cause I don't know, man, I don't Real know how tough. you find the time for that. Like, how do you find the time to do that golf, raise your kids and, you know, homework? Just how do you, how do you do that? Especially like being so that you've stepped away from it for a long time. Like high school was the last time you were in school, right? Yeah, um, for me, it's get up early. Yeah, it's funny because I watched this um, thing on YouTube, and this is one one thing that I'm always trying to learn and come from different aspects and see how people think. So obviously, when, you know, R.I.P. Kobe and called a Kobe uh, situation happened. A lot of videos have been servicing about things he said and and uh, certain things, and he was talking about um, something in one of his talks, he said uh, he was trying to find an advantage compared to all his uh, competitors, whether it be T-Mac or where anybody else in the league, just to gain an advantage. What can I do? What can I do more? What can I do more? I already do this. I already do that. I already do that. He's like, I, you know what I could do? I get up earlier and start my routine even earlier. So then I could work out five times instead of just four times. So it's like when you put that into, you know, your work ethic of what you want to do, 
You find time. You make time. It don't for me. A lot of this shit don't cut off because I'm always thinking about it. I'm always in some aspect or, or another. When you know, from the time I walk in and sit with y'all, I'm thinking about how I want my podcast to look. Yeah. I've already thought about it, doing it multiple times, but it continuously refreshes my mind and resharpens my tools. I can, I can do this. I can change it this way. I want it this way. I want it that way. And then it goes, <laughs> that thought literally goes from there to golf, to school, to everywhere it is. And a lot of it is funny because a lot of it is, once you figure out what your, what your purpose is in, in the situation, whatever you feel like it is, uh, a lot of it is like synergy. It all, a lot of it is just fall in line. Because mm-hmm. a lot of the stuff I learned in school is a lot of things that I, I'm thinking about now and wondering why certain things happen and why things go the way they do. And whatever I'm learning in my liberal studies class translates to my history class. The history mm-hmm. class translates to my English class. My English class will translate into something in my marketing class. You know what I'm saying? And I'll just sit here and look like, damn, I can affect my marketing here and do this here with me and do this. And for me, I already got money. I already got my name, like this image and all of this. So I, I'm almost like my own test dummy. So everything I'm learning, I could just implement on my own. Like, oh, okay, I could do this, this, this. Let's see if this works. This what, oh, I bet. You know what I'm saying? So he turning in the show. He turning in the show. <laughs> He turned it into show. People used to be wondering, like, why are you doing all that? And I'm like, bro, this was my major. No, it just sounds like you two like working in chaos. No, that's what I was gonna say. That's what I was gonna say. I need a little more structure. I'm saying, like, it's crazy when you when you start thinking about how much time a professional athlete actually spends on their craft. Do you realize how much I can get done now? That like the days that I don't work out. I get so much shit done. I never thought that I could have this many things scheduled. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I did this, I did that, I did a podcast, I had a shoot, I still went and ate with my wife, I picked my daughters up, I did. It's like, bro, I would have done none of this. If I was playing ball, I would have woke up, worked out, been at the facility until a certain time, went back to the crib, went to sleep, went to the arena, played the game, came back to the crib. Anything 100%. in between, somebody was up putting a firewall. 100%. So all the stuff he's saying, like, it's like, bro, you get time, and then once you get into that, it's like, bro, I could balance all this. Because we all are super, I feel like if we can stay in the league, have four drug tests a year, you gotta pass, you gotta be at these places on time, you got 15 appearances you gotta make for the team, you got practice, you got weights, you got your treatment. It's like, bro, we are regimented to knock so much shit out. It's right, just, but that's the thing. You were regimented. Now he's on his own. Yeah, I mean, I've been on my that's own. I, no, I'm saying it's still crazy, though, because <laughs> he still, he got a 4.0. Like, yeah. it's still, like, don't nothing fall off. Now you start to see a motherfucker work hard. That's why I be it, it be killing me when people are trying to say mines don't work hard. It's like, bro, the man work. Think about his stigma. Yeah. That we was talking about earlier. The man ain't in the gym enough, or the man ain't doing this enough, or the man ain't doing that enough. It's like, this is the proof of the pudding right here, bro. He a two-time champion, 4.0. And he trying a new uh, sport. Right. Well, it's not that new to him. Huh? It's not that new to him. Oh, yeah, what? I'm saying new, prof- but, professionally, uh, though. I ain't going to lie. I, I did think it was some. Man, I thought it was some bullshit until you did this shit. I ain't going to lie. Now they telling me you for real. I was like, you know how people talk shit? Like, no, I'm nice. I'm nice. I'm nice. People was like, yeah, switch pretty good. But every time I asked them, like, I'm like, so what? They was like, no, no I didn't in, play. He been in hella tournaments. Yeah. No, no, no. I didn't. You knew that when he was when we was in New York? No, I didn't know he was playing. That's what like I'm that, saying. Really. I'm saying back then. Now I'm saying Miles be like they, yeah. he got statistics to go with it. Like yeah, no, he, he had the tape. books. Yeah, like yeah, Miles will pull it up. Like no, look at your boy. Like he for real with this shit. Like man, and that's... he got Jordan cleats. Right, that's so raw, bro. I ain't gonna. Bro, lie. That's the raw. <laughs> I know. I know that has to do Oof. a lot with oh Mike. But God. like, where does the real fascination with golf come from? Or like, when did that happen? Where you really got into it? I was in um, Houston. I was with uh, <clears throat> Rashard Lewis had his first foundation event. It was a uh, celebrity golf event. So he had a bunch of the TJ Ford, John Lucas and all everybody, uh, Clyde Drexler, Moses Malone, all the old school dudes come out there and play. Um, 
and you know uh, auction off foursomes or whatever. I told him I don't play golf, so but I come out and support. He was like, all right, cool, you can come out, smoke, drink, whatever, ride around, fuck with the cart girls, whatnot. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, cool. I pull up on Moses Malone group. He's like, young fella, come hit this ball. I'm like, shit, all right, bet. Go out there. It's like Hall of Famer. I can't tell him no. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I go out there. He show me how to hold the club, whatever, whatever. Hit that motherfucker 300 yards down the fairway. Start talking shit. Threw the club back to him. They was like, man, ain't no way. Bro, when I tell you they was hitting that bitch 15 yards, hooking that joint over here, hooking it over there. I get up that jump. Throw that shit back. Like, man, shit is easy. I ain't playing this shit. Two hours, like an hour and a half, maybe an hour later, pull back over on his group. Get out there. He's, Young fella do it again. He telling people all day. <laughs> he a legend already. Word, right, straight up. Leave. Young fella do it again. I couldn't hit the fucking ball. I was just oh, like them. I was going this, doing you. there, oh. going over. It pissed me off. I was like, nah, I'm getting this shit. Uh, it. It's always so he like got that. mad. It's yeah, he got mad. No, yeah, for sure. Confrontation. So, Swiss, we like to ask all of our guests. We like to ask all, all. All of our guests, everybody who comes on the show, we ask them, what are you working on improving in your personal life? Um, for me, I gotta get better at managing my time for other people. You know, knowing when to give who and when my time and knowing when to save it for me. Same. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, I think that's the biggest um, thing that you can, I can take back because uh, again, you don't. Your time is precious. Right. You know, we all not here for a long time. We all understand that. We all pretty much know that from day dot. And to really look at my time as my biggest investment, because I don't. Have, I mean, money is money. We can lose money. We can make money. We everybody in this room has you know lost twenty dollars and made it back up and found fifty or whatever. Mm -hmm. Can't make time. And, yeah, time is just you know. Spending spending time with people with meaningless or bad energy is like one of is like a pet peeve of mine because I'm wasting time which I don't have to waste because I could be spending time with my kids I could be doing something uh, that I want to do and pretty constructive of what I want to do and I'm not doing that because of what whatever going on right so let's, go. let's get to our listener question every show. I could, you know, I could feel your eyes still looking at me when you do that. Got a show to do. Got a show to do. <laughs> Every show, we like to uh, step out for a second and let the fans get their one burning question that they want to ask that they don't get to walk past us on a day to day, so they don't get to ask the shit, and we probably gonna scroll past it. So we go to Twitter, we grab a good question. Ari, what's our question today? Today's question comes from Andrew underscore Isaac eighty eight. Okay. And they want to know what's the moment in your career where you felt like you were challenged as a man. Ooh, Ooh they when was your manhood me. challenge Word. in your Who career? Who touched your manhood, dog? I know mine. Oh man, you want to go first? You want me to go first while you work? Work? Yeah, go ahead. Get a good my, one. My, you probably remember yeah, this. Yeah, get a good one, boy. We was in. Uh, we was playing with Cleveland, and boy, broad ass in the middle of the. It was at the end. Shorty grabbed the ball at the top of the key to calm us down. And I believe, I, I don't remember if I was not headed over there or what, but he said, shut corner, now. <laughs> Shorty, I looked around. <laughs> He's talking to you. He's talking to you, yeah. I sure. looked at T. Lou. Everybody looking with the eyes like, hurry up. You going like, to do it? <laughs> <laughs> right, nigga, you going to do it? Look, Cleveland is quiet as hell. And I'm like, bro, if I react, I'm the most selfish person on the earth. Cause oh, he, for sure. I'm like, I don't know oh, if he realized sure. how he just said this, bro. But I don't like being talked to like that. Mm, I don't like that. But he said it with so much command. Like if I if he wasn't talking to me, I'd have been proud of him. Like, yeah, man, you took control. <laughs> but he was talking to me, so I wasn't rolling. Um, yeah, afterwards I had Did to have you do a, it? 
Yeah, I, I, Brian, I ended up going to the corner for you, but I did drag my feet and I apologize for that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Because it was like, as a man, I, I really didn't know how to deal with that, bro. Like, I don't know. Like, you know what I'm saying? Your voice ain't had to get that deep to tell me to go to the corner. <laughs> like, and you pointed while you had the ball under your um, armpit. Like, it was like, you know what I'm saying? It was your stature at the moment. I t- I didn't appreciate the stature. Um, but afterwards, yeah, man, we was, man, dog, we, I think I, I think I want to say I approached the man in the shower to tell him, like, bro, come on, man. Like, <laughs> can't be hey, talking man. to each other like yeah, that. Yeah, man, come dude. on, man. We can't, As black I'm a, man, we can't. I'm going to run through a wall for you, my dog. <laughs> he like, shut I ain't no man. Come on, man. Oh, hey, man, I'm just like, I was just, just don't like, talk to me like yeah, that. Yeah, I was, I was just saying, bro. <laughs> I just said I already like that too much. Me, boy, shut right, corner. You did it now. It was right. the now, oh, bro. What's no, that's driving? All yeah, <laughs> see you, bro. Damn, nice car, <laughs> <laughs> dude. You're getting a Dell. God damn, oh, man. Mine was a rookie, bro. Um, I was 18. I was in the locker room in San Antonio. And Byron Scott went off on me. For what? Called me all types of bitches. Oh! Like all types of shit. Oh. Nobody got off on me. He was getting off on me. And you know, this was like I'm I'm a rookie, so I didn't, I I thought this was like the league. Like, I didn't think you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I didn't think I could come back at him like that right. or, or say anything like that. Right. And then one of the vets was like, bro, I don't ever know no man talk to you like that. I don't give a fuck if he your boss or your coach or whatever. Like, and I had to like really like you realize like this is the pro. Like really right. <laughs> Not just that, but he's like, man, but, I'm a man. Like yeah, you can't be you're you're that shit. shit together. Oh yeah. no, but but you saying like you felt that you just was like, I'm trying to be a no, good. because you, for me, I never like. Right, you I come never, from high I come school. from high school. I don't. I mm-hmm. never got into my coach like that. I never challenged my coach. He don't like even that. know the hierarchy. I don't even. Yeah. Right, I don't know like none of that shit. Copy. He man, bro. Damn, he, he kind of took you, advantage. Yeah, hundred mm-hmm. percent. He kind of got off. A hundred percent. He welcomed you to the I felt like if he just if he would have said what he said to anybody else in the locker room They'd at thirty boxed. years old, they would have been fighting for sure. You know what I'm saying? For sure. And for me. I, I I take that shit to heart because, bro, you like, you a forty year old black man at the time. I'm an eighteen year old black kid. You gonna expose me and, and do me like that in front of all these people like that? It's trainers, coaches, my peers, other motherfuckers I'm playing with, all of this shit. And you just tweak it on. You gonna treat me like not even tweak on me like you gotta write the tweak on me if I'm playing like shit and all that and critique yeah. my game and all that. But you gonna like try to demasculate. Yeah, it's the you way know what he I'm did. Like, right, right, right. The way you went about that the whole lingo situation. got too crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not like, even just that, but he's saying like pulling him out in front, like doing it in front of everybody. Like even if he did it right. nicely, it's like the fact that you put me out in front of all these people and I'm only 18 and I don't really yeah, know like, how I this don't shit understand. But, but again, I can understand. Like if you want to critique the game and all of that, right. I can understand that. You could listen, but once just saying how you do me it. Once you start calling me a bitch and you, you soft and all this other shit, I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Right. Now yeah. you got a problem with him. No, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Tall Paul, he didn't know I don't really do that word. I don't do that. I don't do that. That's a whole nother show. Oh, yeah. Tall Paul. Yeah, yeah man. I want to end this on a high Paul. note. That's I love a whole Tall show. Paul, man. All right, so we didn't get to get to this, but what made you choose a HBCU? Um, The youth, the young black youth. Like, Seeing where we at and trying to implement change and what, what ways can I implement change. Right. Um, seeing countless people killed nonstop uh, who look like me and don't have a outlet to be able to speak their mind and be around like-minded people like themselves. Um, it's always in, in this country for us. It's either been, you know, we very rarely have we had opportunity to be in positive communities that are high representation of minorities in those communities. Mm-hmm. You know, it's either incarceration or in the hood and stuff like that. Talk. It's very rare that we have, uh, you know, a, a large mass of 
black people or minorities in a place where everybody's on a higher education, higher level of thinking, not stressed or worried about where they gonna eat tonight, who's shooting what, whatever, you know what I'm saying? And um, I feel like we, I can make an impact on changing it. Right. I feel like for a long time I made an impact on, or letting other people make an impact of my name on being the quote unquote butt of the joke or the clown of the joke or class clown or not being or wanting to be as uh, serious as they would like me to be or whatever. And I just I just don't like people playing with my name. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a situation to where um, I felt that's where I felt most comfortable. That's where I felt where I can rely on people who look like me and want to see me do better, opposed to somebody who just want to get a check off me. Because um, I could have went to any school, but UCLA don't need my money. They don't need my presence. No, it's a Duke don't need me or my presence or whatever. People who need me is HBCU, kids who look like me, people who come from my background, representation, and um, continuously try to strive to be better for them. All right, Jay, I just wanted to ask you real quick about your degree, what's your major, and what do you want to do with your degree when you're done with school? Uh, my degree is liberal studies. I'm studying African history right now. Oh, um, I got a minor in marketing. My my degree is kind of broad, so it teaches, almost teaches you how to think outside the box. Mm -hmm. um, taking a lot of uh, perspective and um, information in with it um, and trying to not just look at it as a stereotypical way of you know, this is how it's supposed to go. There's so many different ways you can skin a cat. And I think for us, we get locked into the that Eurocentric mindset. Mm -hmm. And I try to continuously pull my black brothers and sisters into a, a, a unity, more of a unity circle. So try to continuously influence as many of us as possible to, you know, uh, reach one, teach one, um, being, you know, being, Thinking about it being, how long we was teammates? Six, six, six years or seven? Seven. Seven years. Um, any other business, any other form, you can't put two or 12 millionaires around each other for seven years and them not to work together. I feel like in pro sports, mm -hmm. African Americans, we don't work together. So my biggest initiative is for me is try to continuously get more guys to not look at one another as just competition and more as allies because, I mean, I play with four guys from Jersey. Mm -hmm. We None of us do anything together in the community. We all come from pretty much the same community. So for me, that's just – it just – that's interesting. Trying to do things that make sense. That's interesting as you say that, that in no other, you'll never see it anywhere else, 12 millionaires be together for that long and, never and do nothing happen. Never once. That is insane. I've never thought of it like that. Like that is literally 12 to 15 millionaires. And think about any other business. Together. They travel and together every single day and they mm -hmm. don't do any other side business together. This doesn't happen. That's true. Nigga, you might be a genius. Yeah. Um, 4.0. Yeah. Right, <laughs> I was just gonna say, he, he I ain't got gonna lie, nigga. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. You see, boy, you seem a little older, boy. <laughs> boy, you seem a little wiser, boy. I see why you got the dreads now, boy. Uh, he, <laughs> with all those resources that you just named, what do you think is possible? I mean, what's not, what's impossible, really? It's, That's crazy. I was thinking that in my head. I mean, we have, we what can go. What is your dream to we, have a dream? Literally, we can go from one minority in sports ownership, right? MJ, he's the only one in NHL, uh, MLB, well, black owner, NFL, basketball. Yeah. Out of all the black, predominantly yeah. black sports that yeah. we dominate, there's only one owner throughout all of them. And he's the majority owner. The majority owner. owner. Mm -hmm. 
out of all of the, the money accumulating of all this time, why we should have at least five teams in the NBA, six, seven teams. Why doesn't Dr. J have ownership in the Sixers? Y'all promoting them every down, every time the Sixers come on. Y'all show nonstop Sixers stuff. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Braun should have some type of stake in, in the Cavaliers. He changed the economy by himself single-handedly when he left. Coming, going, coming, going, whatever. And it happens throughout every city. Happening here. Right. So why wouldn't Everywhere we get a piece of that if we are the major factors to that? I mean, at least one team on each professional level should be a, a, a player's team. Players' team. Players yeah. Players own. It's a player's league, always. It's always a player's league. We sell the product. So without us- You are the product. Right. So, and it, it's so funny because it, it's, it's so whitewashed to say because yeah. there was 100% the first thing you can say, well, if it, if it wasn't for us, you wouldn't have the streaming services and the platforms to do all of this. Like, okay, but without us, we are the product. Hey, Amen. There is no game right. if we don't play. There you going to go out no there and play? Game. That's what I'm saying. Like, who's going to go, who's going to get that? It, does, it just doesn't make sense. And it, it, for me, which helps with the golf because everybody's a more of a, on an independent contractor's position. There's no team. I gotta I gotta go out here and make this shit happen. I gotta go get my sponsorships and all this other shit. Like I have to go make it happen. And then team and and the NBA and all this, we play on the team for so long, you right. you, you lose that insight of being an independent person. Yeah. Because they strip you of that because now you're selfish. They rub that with selfish. But because this person doesn't play on a team, he owns the team or works for the team, he can be as selfish as he wants. Yeah. No control. Exactly. Now, we do got to wrap the show. Before we get you out of here, bro, anything you want to uh, promote? One thing I want to tell people is support HBCUs. 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 I Absolutely. wish I would have went to an HBCU. You still can? Nah, it's over with, bro. Um, you just said he was <laughs> like you. You just said it. Huh? Was, you said he you was going No, no, I'm living through him. Switch we ain't gonna hold you, you no are, longer, man. You a piece I'll person. argue with this nigga on my own, man. I appreciate you coming on. Yeah, Always, appreciate bro. you, Switch, man. Yes, sir. My dog, man. Hey man, I just want y'all to know, man, for all y'all with the audio version, Switch came on here with his grown man, Khakis. Oh yeah, I'm going the, to the golf course. The white shoes, yeah, no socks, no. sweater, button down under it. <laughs> that boy, somebody finna drive him around the golf cart. If you're now tuning in, Iman Amongst Men, weird. <laughs>